So I've been seeing all over the news that Billy McFarland is planning to do a Firefest 2.0, and it really brought me back to a, a special time in my life when I was hired to film Fire Festival. So I've been wanting to tell this story on YouTube for a while. Um, I've told this story at parties, weddings, funerals, um, any event under the sun. It's really a great party story to have. Now that all of this stuff is surfacing again, I feel like it's relevant to talk about. Let's go back to 2017. I was living in Los Angeles, and one day I'm working on my computer, and I get a call from a buddy, and he's like, Hey man, I've got a really cool gig coming up in April. I'm like, sweet, what is it? He said, I'm going to send you a link to this uh, video, this festival trailer. Check it out. Let me know what you think. So I click on the link and it takes me to this video. And I see a bunch of celebrities and models on yachts. And it was the Firefest Music Festival trailer. So I was hooked immediately. I called my buddy back. He told me, we're going to be shooting all of the recap videos for this event. We're going to be following around all of these models. At the time, I had only filmed electronic dance music festivals in the States. So this would be my first international trip. And I was stoked to do it. So we start the pre-production planning, all of the gear we would need for this. We had a budget for all of the fun toys, all of the reds. Cinema Glass, Movies, anything we needed for this project. Fast forward to a couple weeks later, we're approaching the time where we're about to fly out. We're about like a week out. We start putting our camera rental orders in. I still don't have my ticket booked. I don't have any other information, no lodging information, no confirmation numbers whatsoever. The rest of our team didn't have any of their stuff booked. We we're about a team of five, so we we're a pretty small crew. My friend who was acting as producer and director for the project was starting to say things like, I don't have the deposit for this to get our rental orders in. I don't have any of your flight information. We need to get this going or else we can't hop on these flights. I'm not going to get on these flights unless they pay us the deposit. So I didn't really think too much of it. This is kind of a thing that sometimes happens in the industry, unfortunately, and so I'm like, this sucks, but whatever, it'll resolve itself. So now we're like probably three days out and we finally get our flights booked. I think like three or two days before this festival, we get our rental orders in and I had a pretty crazy schedule because I was flying home from one festival. I had to pick up all of our rentals and then take the same day a red eye flight to Miami. And from Miami, we would be chartering to Exuma. Now I can't remember if... He actually got his deposit or not before we flew out, but we got our flights booked. We got all of the rentals taken care of. So on my side of things, everything was good to go. So I fly home from this music festival and then the same day I had to pick up our rentals and then that night take a red eye from LAX to Miami. And then from Miami, we would get chartered on a private plane to Exuma. Just got back from Texas, already packing up for the Bahamas. Get to play with some fun toys for the next two weeks. I'm stoked at this point. I'm like, things are finally happening. I'm seeing all of the promo that they're putting out, kind of getting people excited for this festival. I'm like, this is going to be the best week of my life. And this is where the story starts to get fun. So that night, I get all of the gear packed up. We've got cases on cases worth of camera equipment. And there was only one other person flying out from LA, which was one of my friends that I do a lot of other festival work with. So we meet up probably 9 p.m. for our 11.45 p.m. flight. I'm exhausted, but super excited. We head to LAX, we get everything checked in, and we hop on that flight, and I'm like, all right, time to go to bed. So like every other red-eye flight, I fall asleep, and I wake up as we're landing. But as we're landing, something felt a little off. I start realizing, oh no, I have body aches, and I'm sweating, and I have the flu. Between the time of me getting on that flight, falling asleep, and landing in Miami, I came down with the flu. It wasn't a terrible flu. I was able to function, but I did not feel good. I was sweating. It's just not how you want to be feeling on a travel day when you're about to embark on seven days of crazy intense filming. We land in Miami, and I have to get all of our camera gear. We all meet up as a team there. And we have to recheck all of our cases because we have to go into another terminal, which is their international like private charter terminal or something. This whole process took way too long. It was probably from landing to getting into that terminal like three hours. All of the crew from this festival was flying in at the same time to hop on these planes. So we finally get through like hours later, we get all of our bags checked. We get into this terminal and it's just filled to the max with people, mostly crew for the festival. There were probably... 300 people, I would say, 
all in here waiting. Everyone's excited, but also kind of confused because we don't really have much info other than we're flying out on a private plane, which we're like, there's got to be a lot of private planes to uh, hold all of these people. We wait in this terminal for probably an hour and a half or so. I feel like absolute garbage at this point. And finally, it was time to board. And I look out the window. I'm like, oh, I got to see this plane. This plane looked like it had not flown in 30 years. And at that point, I started kind of seeing people's faces like, that's not really what we were expecting. And we also don't know where we're staying when we land. So we finally land, thank God. Everyone's exhausted. We've been traveling all day. I still feel so sick, but I'm at least trying to like maintain. I can at least function, thankfully. So we land and a customs officer comes on and kind of gives us the the spiel of what needs to happen. Everybody has so much gear and equipment. You know, we have to go through a whole customs process in this tiny airport that doesn't even have a proper terminal. This whole process took probably two or three hours, it felt like. It could have been a little little faster than that, but it felt like we were there for hours. We don't know how we're getting to wherever we're going. We don't know where we're going to. Everyone's kind of confused at this point. So then we finally find out that we're going to be picked up and uh, we're going to go to the main villa where uh, the main crew who's running the festival is staying at. They're going to get us fed. They said there's there's a ton of space in this house for us to stay. And there's like probably 75 to 100 people at the airport. We're waiting to get picked up and three big school buses pull up and we're like, okay, we've got transportation. So we load up in these school buses, camera gear, everyone's personal luggage, everything packed as tight as we can into these school buses. And they take us to the villa. The villa is um, probably a 2,500 square foot home. There's a line out the door of people waiting to eat. We pull up, we get all of our camera gear out, all of our baggage and everything. And we're like, we can't stay here. There's no room. We're like, all right, well, let's just eat and we'll figure it out. Everyone at this point is like agitated, confused. They don't know where they're staying. We're like, we can't stay here. I'm not sleeping on the floor. There's nothing here <laughs> where we could stay. And this is the team that we were at, I should point out. The team that we were with was hired by Fire Festival. So none of the people who were involved in this story um, were a part of the people putting on the festival. So everyone was just as confused as the rest. So after we eat, we're just figuring out, okay, what's what are we doing? We're, like, how are we going to stay here? And so finally, the creative agency that hired us was like, we were able to get a cruise ship to stay on. And we're like, sick, a cruise ship. Um, it's it's docked out here, it's empty, it's in between cruises, so all of our crew is going to go stay on this cruise ship, and then we'll just kind of boat out to the festival each day. I'm like, all right, sounds good. So we all hop back into these buses, and we head to the cruise ship, and we're going down towards the dock. It's like, it's late, it's dark, you can't see anything, and we get closer, and I see this, this like boat out, out in the you know, in the distance with lights on. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty little boat. Uh, where's the cruise ship at? And they're like, that's it. It was not a cruise ship. It was like a bingo hall cruise ship. Cruise ship, bingo cruise ship. So we all get out there on these little dinghy boats, probably like five people at a time, all the camera gear. I mean, we have probably 10 cases with us. I'll try to find a photo. I'm sure I have it somewhere. So much gear. There's there's five of us in our camera team. Ten plus cases and luggage and everything. We get onto this boat and it's packed already. And there's a long line to check in to the little rooms that you have in there. And everyone's flipping out for some reason. I'm like, why is everyone tripping out? So I'm sitting there waiting to get checked into this room. At this point, I'd been traveling for over 24 hours and I was still sick. And I just wanted to go to bed anywhere. I would sleep wherever at this point. I was just so exhausted. People were getting checked in, checked in. And I was like one of the later people to get checked in. The guys from our team comes back to the front desk and is like, you put me in the wrong room. There's a lady in this room. And they're like, yeah, that, <laughs> that's the room you're staying in. There's another bed. And he's like, I'm not staying in this room. I don't know this person. So they were putting us into rooms with random strangers, people that didn't know each other. And you just had to stay there. And so luckily me and one of the other camera guys who I know from shooting other stuff with were like, we'll stay in a room together. So at least there was a little familiarity there. It's like three in the morning and finally I just am able to get to bed. So that concludes day one of this. I wake up the next day feeling so much better. Thankfully, it was like a 24 hour flu. We go and we eat breakfast in this cruise ship. It's like in a literal bingo hall is uh, where the breakfast is at. 
and it's fine. You know, everybody at that point was kind of like, all right, that was kind of a crazy day, but at least that's behind us. We're here. We get to get ready for this festival. So after breakfast, the creative agency was like, hey, just go chill for a little bit. Hang tight. We're trying to figure out um, logistics so you can go film around um, the behind, like around the island that we were at. Hour or two rolls by, just chilling. Like, man, what's taking so long? So we finally get a text, and they're like, hey, filming's delayed. Um, the festival grounds aren't ready yet. Should be up in a few hours, um, so just kick it, have some lunch, and we'll reconvene in the afternoon. And then after lunch we get another text saying, hey, filming is canceled for today. The festival is not ready yet. I'm like, okay, well, we just burned another day here. I don't remember how much longer after that, but I remember starting to hear that they're like, hey, they're kicking us off this cruise ship. We can't all stay on here. There's too many people. Now they have to figure out where else we're going to stay. So we're just sitting here waiting. It's like late afternoon, early evening at this point. And finally, we get word that they're going to take us on a plane to Nassau, the main touristy island, and we're going to stay on an all-inclusive resort, and every day we're just going to fly in to the island where the festival's at, film, fly back, stay at this island. So we're like, okay, that's fine, but not all of us could go. We had so much camera gear with us that, one, it would be too heavy for the plane, and two, it just logistically didn't make sense. Nobody could leave it on the island. There was nowhere secure for us to leave all this camera gear. So so our director and producer and one or two others, I can't remember, who are on our camera team, decided to stay back. And they're like, we'll just stay on the island. They're going to get us a villa. Um, and we'll just stay with the gear every day. So you three uh, fly out, which was me, my friend who was the other camera op, and our sound guy. So we decided we would go and get shuttled in every day. And they would stay on the island. They're like, we'll figure it out. It's fine. We're going to stay on the boat tonight, and then we'll get a villa for tomorrow. And tomorrow was the day that people were going to start showing up to the festival. Uh, we're going to be filming all day before with um, some of the the models that were in that, that trailer. So a lot of the celebrity models that we had seen, they're going to be flying in, and we're going to be filming some stuff with them. So we're like, all right, let's go to Nassau. We fly off on this little tiny prop plane, which was equally as terrifying as the plane that got us to the island. We get to this resort. It's beautiful. Um, They get us checked in. Me and my buddy have a nice room that overlooks the water, and everything's all-inclusive. So we wake up the next day. We go. We get our breakfast, and um, the team was like, hey, we're trying to figure out flights to get out to film, Um, but they're still kind of delaying the festival grounds. It's still not set up, so we got to kind of push it a little bit. So I'm like, okay, so we wait, we wait longer, we wait longer, and then we get another text that says, hey, we're not filming today because the festival is still not done. So at this point, we're kind of like, what's going on? We're, people are supposed to show up today. We haven't filmed anything. We haven't taken these cameras out of their cases. So we text our team that was on the island, and we tell them, hey, they're not, uh, we're not shooting today. They're not flying us in. So they're like, all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. So now we just have a free day on this all-inclusive resort, and the whole team was just like, just go chill, enjoy the beach. As the day kind of progresses and the sun starts going down, uh, we start to hear some chatter. And people are starting to get a little nervous, and they're saying, have you guys checked Twitter? Have you seen what's going on on Twitter? I'm like, no, I don't don't know. And so everybody starts looking at Twitter, and that's when... everything started kind of blowing up. People started showing up to the island. All of the craziness started happening over there. I remember being at this bar at the hotel with the whole team that hired us. It was me and the two others from our camera department. And the whole team is just like freaking out. They don't know what they're going to do. They're realizing that this festival is probably not happening, but they're like, we don't want to say anything until it's for sure not happening. Twitter's going crazy. Everybody's starting to see what is happening. It's starting to hit the news, and I'm getting texts and calls from my family at home wondering what is happening and am I okay or am I floating in the ocean somewhere? So now we're checking in on our guys that are down at the island, and they're telling us that they don't have a place to stay. They have all of the camera gear with them. They don't know what's happening. So while we're over here having this beautiful paid vacation, drinking on an, on an all-inclusive resort, they're over here fighting for their lives, trying to get all the camera gear to somewhere where they could stay that's sheltered. So we have this group text going on, and they're giving us updates. They tell us this story where they had to get all this camera gear somewhere, and they somehow stumbled upon like a janitor's key ring with all of these villa keys on it. 
So they had these keys, all the camera gear, but nowhere to take it. They stopped a bus that had a bunch of influencers on it, basically told them, you guys need to get out. We have all this camera gear. And they essentially hijacked this bus to put all of our camera gear on and take it to the villa. I don't know any other details other than what they told me, but uh, they basically kicked out a bunch of Instagram influencers so they could get our gear to wherever they were staying. They end up finding a villa where the keys worked and just posting up there. So they said, hey, we have a place to stay. Uh, we have all the gear safe. We're just going to like post up here while all this stuff is happening, and we're going to figure out how to get off the island. And at this point, everyone is trying to leave the island. So if you saw the documentary, you saw that the airport was just packed full of people trying to get on these planes to get off, and there was no way that our team with all of that camera gear was going to get on any of those planes. I felt very bad because the team that hired us was very stressed and they didn't know what they were going to do. So the next day we wake up and we basically have like a team meeting at breakfast and they just told us the festival's not happening. We're going to figure out how to get everybody home. Luckily, we would be flying out of a different airport, not the one that everyone was stuck at. So they get us booked to fly out that night and then we would stay in a hotel in Miami and then fly home the following day. But there was one problem. Our team, with all of our camera gear, was still stuck on the island. So what they were doing is trying to figure out how they were going to get off this island. There was no way they were going to be taking any of these charter flights. So my friend, the producer, director, he somehow is able to find a private pilot who owns a Cessna to fly to the island, pick them up, and take them to Miami. So this guy gets in, and it's in the evening, and there's still those flights going in and out trying to shuttle these influencers on and off the island. They finally are waiting behind these planes to take off. There's delays. They're just sitting there. And they get onto the runway. And they're just waiting to take off. And then the pilot's like... We're still waiting on the clearance. And it's it's sunset. We can't take off. They're not going to let us take off. Which really sucks. Um, I'm so sorry. I don't know why they're so backed up. I don't know why they're keeping us on the ground. But now now we can't. They have to get off this plane and they get all the gear off, and they have to go back to the villa. Now the pilot's stuck on the island with them, and they're like, all right, well, we're going to stay at this villa again tonight. Meanwhile, me and the two others were able to fly from Nassau to Miami, book a airport hotel, and stay there. So we're just chilling, waiting on the word to to pick these guys up. They said, all right, we got to stay here one more night. So another day goes by that this team is stuck on the island with all of the camera gear, We're already in Miami just waiting to go pick them up. They tell us which airport they're flying into, so we Uber out to this airport and we just wait. And luckily, finally, they were able to get on that plane onto the runway and fly out, and they made it to Miami. It was funny because we had had a crazy time, but we were able to get off the island and have a somewhat pleasurable experience because we could have you know food and drinks and a nice place to stay. Meanwhile, these people were just trying to survive on this island with zero resources, and they somehow were able to find someone to to pick them up on an airplane. It was incredible the way they were able to do that. It was a crazy, crazy few days. Probably one of the craziest experiences of my life. I can't even imagine what it was like for them to actually be stuck on the island. But that is my story of going to Fire Festival. It was a crazy experience. I'm still to this day bummed that it didn't happen because... The plans we had for filming were going to be amazing. We were going to be on yachts. We were going to be all over the island just filming awesome stuff, which would have been really cool for my reel, for one. But it would have just been a very cool experience. So it is a bummer to everyone involved who didn't get to have those experiences, but still made for a good story. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Also, no, I will not be filming the second fire Festival.